Parents of Reddit, what is something your child has done that you can never forgive them for? Story 1. When I was a kid, I was playing outside and took a rock from the driveway and carved I love you mom in huge letters across the side of my mom's brand new Camaro. She cried for hours after seeing it because she didn't know what she should do. How could she punish me for saying I love her? My mom usually explodes when she wants to, but this one time she had to keep it all in. She still says she wants to beat my butt because of that. Story 2. Not my child, but this is about my younger brother. He's an alcoholic and has been for the past 15 years. He's only 32. Anyways, when he drinks, he's a completely different person. I'm not talking about a sloppy drunk, but more like a possessed demon filled with absolute hate. He never finished high school and barely got his GED. Hasn't worked in the past few years. Our mom supports him financially. Car paid for, apartment paid for, spending money provided to him. Basically, she's an enabler and he's a manipulator. His drinking is so out of control, I've had to cut him out of my life. It's sad because he has a nephew who constantly asks for him and I just have to tell my son, Uncle Drunk has moved far away. My brother has never made an honest attempt at sobering up. In fact, he's full of excuses. I I can't have that in my life or my family's life anymore, and for that reason I've completely cut all ties with him. I can never forgive him for putting alcohol ahead of family. Ah, it's heartbreaking to hear about the pain and suffering caused by addiction, especially when it's affecting someone so young like the author's younger brother. It's clear that his alcoholism has caused significant strain on his family, and it's understandable why they cut him out of their life. Story 3. Younger brother was relatively normal, but older stepson was having a lot of trouble in school. Got in trouble all the time. Older stepson is in counseling because of his behavior. He's cutting himself in school. There's a <laughs> attempt. I'm devoting lots of time to trying to help him, trying to fix his life. He's incredibly intelligent and thoughtful. In the middle of all this, we find he has tens of thousands of pictures of child P on his computer. I only looked at a small sampling, but it was the prepubescent kind. We delete them, consult a lawyer, bring it up in counseling, lock the computer down, and install monitoring software. Stepson figures out how to get around everything, is clearly addicted to child P. He's 15, nearly 16. He brings home his 14-year-old girlfriend's underwear. I take them away. His therapy program specifically forbade this. He comes at me with a knife. Police are called, but he's smart and knows how to work them. We find a treatment program to deal with child P addiction. Go to counseling once a week and group counseling once a week. Part of this program is admitting your wrongs. You have to come out and admit it in front of the group. He drops a bombshell. He's been his younger brother since he was six or seven, and he forcibly his now ex-girlfriend. The DA won't press charges because there's no proof, so we have to do this all voluntarily. We have to ask the state to please take him and give him services. If we don't, the state will take his younger brother and place him in protective care. It's a pretty traumatic process. He's removed from the home and placed in a day treatment program by social services, but only after several awkward months. In the meantime, his younger brother is having issues. He throws tantrums all the time, has to be restrained at home. We learn how to restrain our kid to prevent him from hurting himself. Treatment does not go well. He hates the program, hates the restrictions on his life. He's much smarter than the other kids in the program, so he becomes sort of a ringleader. He's labeled high risk and a potential psychopath. Eventually, he's going to turn 18, and the state is going to end their custody over him since he's a voluntary case. He has to figure out what to do, or he'll be homeless, as he can't come back to living with us. He asks us if we could just kick his younger brother out of the home and make him go live in state care so he can come live at home. Story 4. My sister escaped a controlling, abusive marriage when I was 12. She had nothing but her 6-month-old son when she moved back into my parents' home. I spent the next 15 years very active in raising that child. Was basically another parent. When he was a teenager, he helped his father blindside my sister with a lawsuit suing for custody. Her ex tried this every other year or so, just to haul her into court and force her to have to deal with him, but they never went anywhere before this. He was old enough that his wishes would be considered. 
considered, and she didn't have the money to fight. Keep in mind that my nephew had never made any mention of wanting to live with his dad, so that little crap sat in court and spewed out the most hurtful lies about my sister. She was a single mom and had her share of problems, but she worked her butt off, and the whole family chipped in to make sure his life was the best we could all provide. After hearing that kid tell a judge about my sister parading men through the house and leaving him alone for days while she was out I saw my sister completely give up on her son. Now he's in his 20s and lives in his dad's basement. I understand that he is another victim of his father's psycho control, but when he said those things about my sister and I saw her heart break like that, I was done too. Oof, reading this story, my heart goes out to your sister and the pain she must have felt when her son sided with his abusive father and lied about her. It's incredibly sad to see how someone who was once so close to their family could turn against them in such a hurtful way. At the same time, it's important to remember that the son may have been struggling with his own trauma and emotional pain due to the abuse he suffered at the hands of his father. As difficult as it is, it's important to understand the reasons behind his behavior and not just dismiss him as a little crap. Story 5. I'm not a parent, but I know my mom will never forgive my sister. When my grandmother died, she left each one of us a wedding set. My sister, being the oldest, chose my grandmother's, and I got my great-grandmother's, which was a 2.5 carat diamond. Hers was a 1 carat. Anyways, my sister brought some friends over and raided my parents' house, stole my dad's chainsaw and TV, stole all of my mom's jewelry, including a pendant that was from the women's rights movement, and stole 800 in cash that was for my mom's work. She collects insurance payments, so she has cash. It was hidden in my room, so they went through everything. She pawned her wedding set and stole mine along with a ring that was my grandfather's and my tennis bracelet my father gave to my mother on their wedding day. Mom gave it to me when I got engaged. The pendant meant the world to my mom as my grandmother used to tell stories of her mother to my mother when she was younger. My mom and grandmother were very close, and a lot of my mom's jewelry was my grandmother's. My sister laughed about it. She didn't care and still doesn't. She's also called the police on my dad for hitting her and threatening her with a gun and also slapping around her son, none of that being true. Story 6. Well, this will be an interesting one. For the record, I am the son in question. I remember the day when I told my mother that my 17-year-old girlfriend was pregnant. Something changed in my mother, and it definitely was not for the better. I knew I had fricked up, but didn't truly understand the struggle like my mother did. You see, my mother had me when she was 17 also. She had scholarships to go to art school and potentially make something of herself. She ended up taking care of me instead. I remember my mother looking at me and saying, you are stupid if you choose to take care of that child. We got into a fight over it. I felt that since I was the dumb arse that got my girlfriend knocked up, I should be the one to take care of it. I had computer repair skills and a knack for working hard. Finding work wouldn't be that hard, would it? Fast forward a few years, and I can understand just exactly what she meant. Please note, I do love my children every single day and wouldn't trade them for anything. I spent those years watching as all my friends grow further away from me. Most got distant and didn't want to talk to a guy who had two jobs and a kid. I was a buzzkill for most of them. I struggled and pushed through everything that I had to take care of her. I honestly wasn't sure if I was going to make it for a while. Two jobs making minimum wage isn't enough to afford daycare and a one-bedroom apartment here in Iowa. I feel I lost a portion of my sanity through those times. I spent most of it wondering what life would be like if I gave her up for adoption and had done what my mother had suggested. Would I be happier? I would have graduated and have a job making significantly more money than I do now. I did eventually prosper, but my mother and I have never been the same. She lost custody of me when she was younger because she couldn't keep up. She was definitely proud of me when I received my degree and got a real job. It took six years to do what would have taken two. I still did it though. My mother was never going to forgive me for putting myself through exactly what she went through, but I proved her wrong. Story 7. I'm not a parent, but I did something that my mother will never forgive me for. Before I begin, you need to know some information about my mom. My mom's Catholic. She's been going to church every Sunday since she was five. She believes that a man and a woman shouldn't have relations before marriage. Me and my high school girlfriend were hanging out after school at my house as usual. Things started to get hot and heavy, and we started making out. 
clothes were coming off, and at the time, I finally thought I was going to lose my virginity. I had been with this girl for three years, and I had never gotten a BJ or had <laughs> with her. I had seen her naked and fondled her breasts, but that's as far as we had gone. Mid makeout, my girlfriend just stops and asks me if I wanted a BJ. Obviously, I said yes. I was finally getting my dong sucked and it felt great. I was loving every moment of it until my mom walked in. Instead of knocking on my door like she usually did before entering, she just opened the door. I don't know what a mother's reaction should be in this type of situation, but she started yelling at my girlfriend. Girlfriend. When I say yelling, I mean I heard her say words that I never heard her say before. She called my girlfriend a <laughs> and said that God would dang us both to heck for our act of sin. My girlfriend at this point is in tears and she's scrambling to get her clothes on and pretty sure she left my house without her bra because she was in such a panic. My mom didn't speak to me for a month after that. She didn't ask me how my days were at school. She didn't speak to me during dinner. And she didn't even ask me to go to church on Sunday with her anymore. She used to go every Sunday, but I always said no. That's the angriest I have ever seen my mom, and we have never spoken about it. When she finally did talk to me, she said if I wanted to ever speak with her again, I had to go to confession and confess my sins. I told her I would go, but I ended up going to a Denny's and ordering their Lumberjack Grand Slam instead. She thinks I went to confession though. Also, every time my girlfriend came over after the incident, my mom would leave the house. I don't know where she went, but she couldn't be in the same vicinity as her. Worst part of it all was my girlfriend didn't attempt to give me another BJ for a year because she was so scared of my mother walking in on us. Story 8. My daughter turned 14 this year, got her license and all. She wanted a car real bad, of course, and I wasn't going to get one, but we just happened to stumble on a decent vehicle for a ridiculous price. Heck, just buying the thing for an extra vehicle was a no-brainer. We planned on giving it to her for Christmas this year. Big bow, all that jazz. However, she's been a snoopy crap lately and one day decides to go through the mail, finds the title the owner mailed us, and receipt for storage. Yes, I'm getting a car! That was about a month ago and I'm still pissed off. I'm not mad that she found out about whatever Christmas present she was getting. I'm mad because this is just one of those landmark gifts. I was getting really excited about seeing the look on her face, pictures, all that. Might sound stupid, but that was going to be my Christmas present to myself. In a way, she ruined my Christmas morning two months ahead of schedule. Yeah, I can understand why you're upset about your daughter finding out about her Christmas present early. It's always disappointing when something you were looking forward to gets spoiled. However, it's important to remember that your daughter didn't do this intentionally to ruin your surprise or your Christmas. She was just being curious and happened to stumble upon the title and receipt. Maybe you could talk to her and explain how much this gift meant to you and ask her to keep it a secret for a little while longer. At the end of the day, what's important is the joy your daughter will feel when she gets her car and the memories you'll create as a family. Story 9. Not my child, but my aunt. So from my grandparents' perspective, it's their child. My grandfather had brought back some spoils of war from Japan at the end of World War II. He was stationed right there around the surrender. He got hold of a flag and some samurai swords and a few other smaller items. They were likely worth a good amount now, but they were more sentimental in value to my grandfather, uncle, and mother. My aunt, in her 30s at the time, split up with her latest boyfriend and moved in with my grandparents with her small children because she was too lazy to work. Shortly after that, all of the stuff disappeared. She never admitted to taking them, but seeing as there were lots of other valuables, it's unlikely that someone broke in or anything. She was the only one that would have had access to them during that time, so she's the only one who could have taken them. It's possible she had a guest that took them, but she's still responsible even then. It would have been hard for someone to take something like swords and the wall mount without noticing. My grandparents never forgave her until the day they died. Story 10. My mother passed away, and then this happened. My sister stole my mom's wedding ring that was left to me to have when I married, took a bat and destroyed all of my dad's things, didn't pay their part of the bills, took my dad's money that he paid them to take care of the bills, stole $500 out of my dad's bank account, created an AT&T account in my mom's name post-mortem and never paid for it, left my dad in the lurch, and moved away. And the real kicker that finally broke the camel's back was had my dad arrested for indecent 
pregnancy with a child got my 11-year-old nephew to exaggerate, saying that my dad exposed himself to him, when in reality, my nephew is weird and likes to try to burst in on people to see them naked so he can say, I saw you naked, ha 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 ha. The charges were dropped last month. I only hate one person, well, two, my sister and her girlfriend, and I will never forgive them. Story 11. This story is kind of the opposite of the question. My mother forgave me for something I never thought she would. This was a few years ago. I had lost my job and was going broke quickly. I needed money for rent and bills, and I really had nowhere to turn. One day, I just panicked and committed an armed robbery to get a few bucks. I figured that if I wasn't caught immediately, I would get away with it. Five days later, the police are at my door. They take me to the station and charge me with robbery. I deny everything, but all I could think of was that the next few years would be in prison. I had only spent five days in jail for a DUI previously to this event. When they booked me finally, they told me I could make a phone call. The only number I knew was my mother's. It's been the same since I was a kid. I turned the call down. I was too embarrassed. A few days later, I had to go to medical for a physical. The nurse asks if anybody knows I'm in jail. I don't know why I told her, but I mentioned that I had chickened out of calling my mom. She points to a phone in the office and tells her that I can call her now. I just remember the phone ringing and hoping to God she wasn't home, but she was. I expected her to disown me, but she just seemed more concerned about my safety and if I needed anything. She said she would be proud of me no matter what I did. The next day, the jail tells me I have a visitor. I walk in and there is my mom. She starts crying and just smiles. She tells me that she's happy to see me and that she put $100 on my books so I could buy some supplies because she knew no one else would do it for me. My mother visited me once a month for two years. I received cards weekly and even when I told her to stop sending money, I would get a random $50. I guess the point is that she never gave up on me. My mother and I talk all the time, more than before. I still get cards about once a month with a note inside reminding me how proud she is of me. This is a powerful and touching story of a mother's unconditional love and support for her child. Story 12. Don't have kids yet, but I can share something that I did that my parents have never forgiven me for. I won't even use a throwaway. I got my parents in trouble with the police and child services when I was seven. About 20 years ago, give or take, I was in the fourth grade, living in a medium-sized town in New Jersey. I am a first-generation Chinese-American. Both my parents are from Hong Kong and moved to the States in their teens. I was a super hyper kid. Both my parents worked in New York City and came home late. They didn't have the time to take me to peewee soccer or Pop Warner football, so I was always the disruptive kid in class, as school was my only real outlet for socialization. To all the kids who grew up with their parents throwing around a football or a baseball, Thanksgiving dinners, Christmas presents, yeah, I wished I had parents like yours. Anyway, my parents are both very traditional immigrant Chinese people, so when I was bad, my parents used to discipline me. Didn't know any different at the time. My father used this bamboo stick, or the handle of a feather duster to do it. I just thought that everyone went through the same thing. Well, one day at school, a teacher got wind of it. I don't remember how exactly. Maybe they saw a bruise. Maybe I mentioned something. Maybe I wanted the attention. It's all a fuzzy blur, but very quickly, word went from my teacher to nurse, from nurse to principal, from principal onward. You get the point. It got ugly fast. Phone calls were made, and that night, detectives were at my house. My parents knew something was up because they had started getting phone calls. When my mom got home from work, I remember she said, Hey, WAP, instead of my normal name of Wapoon. She would never called me that in my life. I knew I fricked up. It was bad, very bad. I tried explaining that my dad never hit me because he was angry or enraged, but it was just the way he did things. I guess that lessened what punishments would have come their way. Eventually, things started to clear out. We were lucky, I guess. We had to go through family counseling. My parents never forgave me for that. From that till now, I've been treated as a second-class citizen till the time I left the house and went to college. I would get the one-ply toilet paper while everyone else got the two-ply, so to speak. I had a kid sister whom they babied and gave the world to and celebrated. Growing up, I felt more like a financial liability to my parents rather than their flesh and blood. 
I became an angry teenager who listened to a lot of Rage Against the Machine and Papa Roach at the time. I cringe at Papa Roach as I type this. I can empathize with both sides though. To my parents, I was their pride and joy, who inexplicably and suddenly became for them this source of terrible shame and remorse. I guess for a proud traditional Chinese man, I hurt him very much, in a world where Chinese men are taught to be bulletproof emotionally. On the other hand, I think, dude, this is America. This isn't the same place as where you came from. For many years, I've been trying to repair my relationship with my parents. Maybe they fricked up. Maybe I fricked up a little too. It taught me that the world isn't perfect. And maybe that's okay. I have some serious fears though about me being a crappy dad as a result of all of these things. I hope not. For what it's worth though, I think I'm stronger for it. I don't harbor any ill feelings anymore, despite how awful it must have been for all of us through those years. I hope that one day they will forgive me, because I know that I've forgiven them.